I want to get you straight to late breaking news tonight. Just into our newsroom reports of a shooting at the Morgan State University campus that is in Baltimore, Maryland. So Baltimore police just a few minutes ago confirmed that there are multiple victims in this shooting. Here's the thing, though. We don't know their conditions right now. Officers there are asking people to stay away from the area. Details very limited right now. We're expecting a news conference momentarily. We're going to try and bring you more information in this newscast. Now back here at home on one side, you have a proposal to cut school to close school campuses on the other. You have a plea to reconsider. Yeah, that's the battle between SAISD and parents that's been going on all week long at community meetings. As the night team's John Paul Barajas reports, parents are very frustrated. You didn't come to us asking for solutions. You're amputating a leg when a band aid would have worked. This school is the perfect school for me. Parents and students pleaded with San Antonio ISD staff in hopes of saving their school. People will be heartbroken, not just children, their families. How are we building a family that way? Why can't we stay? Marn Gates are among the 19 SIIC schools that could close under a proposal to right size the district. They had a plan, a schedule, they marked trees, which ones were going to be cut, which ones weren't. Where did that investment back into the community go? SAISD is also facing some questions about bond funds designated for schools that could close. The most recent $1.2 billion package was approved by voters in 2020. Of that, $179 million was set aside for the schools potentially on the chopping block, but the district says just $3.5 million has already been spent on those schools in question. That did uh, pay for a lot of conditions assessments and surveys that we can definitely use as we determine what's, what we're going to do with our campuses moving forward. Even if that means that that campus no longer be utilized? Correct. It was a general bond proposition for the district. If trustees approve the right-sizing proposal, Yvonne Little with SAISD says the district does not plan on selling any of its buildings. As for the remaining bond funds, a statement from SAISD says, quote, we will conduct facility assessments of each of the schools that will receive additional students and teachers, and we will reinvest in our remaining facilities, bringing them closer to the contemporary standards. The financial outlook of what it would look like in five years, in the school year 27-28, we can face a deficit of $342 million. And district officials also tell us that because the 2020 bond was a general general district bond proposition, they can redirect funds to other campuses if the right sizing proposal is approved. They have 14 community meetings left before the final vote on November 13th, and we have that full schedule on our website, ksat.com. At SAISD, John Paul Barajas, KSAT 12 News. JP, thank you. This is something that's never happened before in U.S. history. That is until tonight. That man, Kevin McCarthy, out as Speaker of the House. Representative McCarthy ousted by a vote of 216 to 210. So let's take it back here. Florida Representative Matt Gates introduced a resolution titled a motion to vacate. And today it passed. Chaos is Speaker McCarthy. Chaos is somebody who we cannot trust with their word. Eight Republicans voted to remove McCarthy as well as a majority of House Democrats. The California Republican said shortly after the move that he would not run for the job again. I believe I can continue to fight, maybe in a different manner. I will not run for speaker again. I'll have the conference pick somebody else. I hope you realize that every day I did the job, regardless whether you underestimated me or not, I wanted to do it with a smile. So now the House has to elect a new speaker. It's unclear, though, who's going to be nominated or when that vote is going to take place. But for now, North Carolina Congressman Patrick McHenry is going to serve as the interim speaker. And one of those votes to oust McCarthy was Texas Congressman Henry Cuellar, who is back at work today after a scary scene last night. He was carjacked. We first brought you this story as breaking news last night on the night beat. The congressman arriving at his Washington, D.C. home just a mile away from Capitol Hill. When all of a sudden, Cuellar says three masked men swarmed his car, put guns in his face, and demanded his keys. So they said they wanted my car. I said, sure, you got to keep calm in those situations. And then they took off. 
The congressman was not hurt in the carjacking last night. Capitol Police are leading that investigation and say Cuellar's phone and Toyota crossover were later recovered in two separate locations. The car, by the way, was found abandoned. I got three brothers of law enforcement, so I certainly appreciate the, uh, the good work that the police did last night. White House Press Secretary Corrine Jean-Pierre says that President Biden did have a chance to speak with Cuellar today. She went on to say, quote, we are certainly grateful and relieved that the congressman was unharmed and we are thankful to the law enforcement to have reacted so quickly, end quote. Now, when your phone lets out a screech tomorrow afternoon, don't panic. The federal government actually just testing its emergency alert system. That test will be sent to all smartphones in addition to TVs and radios about 120 our time. A text will follow saying it's just a test. It's the second time ever a test alert will be sent to every smartphone in the country. You know, there hasn't been an official groundbreaking at the site of a new Southside hospital, but drainage work and other projects to get the land ready for construction, those are full steam ahead. The University Health Palo Alto Hospital campus is set to sit on about 68 acres of land at Zarzamora and Jaguar Parkway. It's just down the road from Texas A&M San Antonio. Now, University Health says the Palo Alto campus is going to bring Southside families much needed access to medicine and specialists. The new campus is also going to be the new headquarters for University Health Institute for Public Health. Officials say they're going to break ground on the hospital early next year and they're hoping to open it by 2027. Tomorrow afternoon, our KSAC community partners hosting a phone bank for the South Texas Blood and Tissue Center. Yeah, operators are going to be there to help register people for blood donations and also accept financial donations. That money is going to go towards replacing the older vehicles that are used to transport blood. Yeah, it's happening from noon until 7 o'clock. You can read more about it on KSACcommunity.com. Larceny, vehicle thefts, and vandalism among the most committed crimes in San Antonio in the first eight months of this year. Here's the thing, though. Data from San Antonio Police shows that nearly 5,000 more property crimes were reported this year compared to last. The night team's Patty Santos tells us that neighborhood leaders are joining forces now to fight crime across our region. Where there's food, music, and games, there's a feeling of community. It's about neighbors meeting neighbors. Carlos Gonzalez with the West End Hope in Action organized this San Antonio Neighbors Together event, also known as National Night Out, at the Frank Garrett Multipurpose Center. And across San Antonio, nearly 500 neighborhoods joined forces with local organizations, providers, and law enforcement to create better communities. Every neighborhood is similar in that if more of us know each other, there's more of us good, well-intended people than there are the others. And A few miles out at the neighborhood place, Gabby Garcia and her daughter Victoria enjoyed the sense of community the event creates. I see the people that I know from the, uh, you know, from the community and the school, and I see kids just make friends. You know, it's fun. <laughs> the gathering also opened the door for organizations to offer services. But most importantly, it gave many residents a chance to show the mayor. That's the detective in me coming out. Police chief and sheriff, why crime-free communities matter. Biggest concern as a mother, I guess, is the safety in the schools. It will be really important for me to see something different for them. Gonzalez hopes this feeling of unity and safety carry on beyond tonight. Sometimes it seems a little overwhelming for any one of us to do it, but by doing it together, we can make a difference. Patty Santos, KSAC 12 News. Great to see so many people turn out oh, for yeah. National Night Out. Well, you still have another chance to speak to Bear County's top leader about the issues you care most about. Judge Peter Sakai has been hosting a series of community conversations, and tomorrow night, the fourth and final session will be at UTSA Park West Field House. It's off 1604, not far from West Hausman Road on the city's northwest side. It'll begin at 530 p.m. and you can read more about it on KSAT.com. Here's a question for you. You looking for work? Because there are a number of positions that are open at Joint Base San Antonio. They need law enforcement, plumbers, animal caretakers, and also contract specialists. It's happening from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. tomorrow at the Norris Conference Center on Northwest Loop 410. Good luck. And, of course, before you go, don't forget your resume.
The final touches being made at the home of our San Antonio Spurs last month. The arena officially renamed today. Crews removed the AT&T Center letters, replacing them with the venue's new name, the Frost Bank Center. The signage change comes 22 days from the start of the NBA season, which is set for October 25th. It looks nice. So last year, hundreds of students in the Northeast and Northside ISD were disciplined for THC vaping in schools, and a state law that just went into effect could make those numbers go up. Case that investigates how bad this problem has become over the years, and also how districts are trying to discourage it. A new law cracking down on vaping in schools is presenting a challenge for San Antonio's largest school districts. Yeah, House Bill 114 went into effect on September 1st. It requires districts to place any student found with a vaping related item be put in alternative education placement. Case that investigates Lee Waldman looks into how big an issue this is in Northeast and also Northside schools. The shops seem to pop up on every corner advertising vaping with colorful signs. We recognize that it's a prevalent issue in and throughout the, the community. Northside ISD Superintendent Dr. John Kraft says THC vaping has been a problem in their schools. The number increased by twofold just from 21-22 to the 22-23 school year. A big problem. Last school year, NISD had 1,800 disciplinary hearings. 1,434 of those were for THC vaping. For the 2020-2021 school year, there were only 746 THC vaping related hearings. The prevalence in in, the, in and about the community, uh, the accessibility uh, in the community uh, has really caused and led to probably that number uh, increasing. It's not just a north side issue. Northeast ISD provided this data for the 2022-2023 school year. 1,482 discipline conferences with 666 related to THC. In a statement from NEISD, prior to HB 114, non-THC vaping discipline offenses were not referred to DAEP. But this school year, we could see both of those numbers drastically increasing with the passage of House Bill 114. The law requires mandatory disciplinary action for any kind of vaping on school property regardless if it involves THC. Our DAP program, at the, especially at the secondary, middle school and high school levels, they're not designed to accommodate that number of students. In light of HB 114 becoming law, Northside ISD is launching a second chance program so that alternative schools like this one don't become overwhelmed. A kind of a second chance program academy so uh, that first time offenders, we have the ability, like I say, to educate students without a full blown uh, DAP placement to another campus. It'll keep the district in compliance while keeping kids at their original campuses. Both districts have put out new messaging to parents and students about the change. We want to make sure that they know we take it seriously and we've given the tools for them to take it seriously as well. NISD is focusing on educating about the health risks of vaping as well as the disciplinary risks. It's very intentional in the prevention message, which we have not really explored previously, and so we're excited about the opportunity to have targeted prevention. For KSAT Investigates, I'm Lee Waldman. So staying on this topic, tomorrow NISD is going to have uh, speakers from the Attorney General's Office, DEA, and also Northside Police to talk about the dangers of vaping as well as fentanyl. Now we here at KSAT, we're going to be there live to cover that event and bring you information so that you're also able to keep your kids safe. Take a live look outside right now, and I think we should have some sort of a clock. Okay. <laughs> Countdown to the cold Yeah. We're Not all looking forward to it. People want to whip out their sweater. They've been waiting. Well, They're waiting to go into their attics or their have. crawl space to take out their sweaters. And Adam, you keep stringing them along. Well, this isn't exactly going to be sweater weather, but it is going to be noticeably cooler. The countdown is on to a Thursday cold front. However, don't think that Thursday is when it's going to get cooler and all the changes are going to happen. This is going to be a gradual process. The cooler and less humid air isn't going to be here really until the weekend. That's when you'll mostly notice it. But the rain, that's slated for Thursday. Let's get to our rain chances tomorrow. We've got a 20%, an isolated pop-up 
random shower or non severe thunderstorm. 20% then by Thursday we're up to 70% because of that slow moving cold front moving into town and some showers could linger into Friday morning, especially south of town. Today we had some good rain around Houston. Too much of a good thing for some parts of Houston, actually over two inches downtown, some higher accumulations south of downtown and closer to the coast out in West Texas. Still a little bit of thunderstorm activity as well, and that's where it's going to be tomorrow. West Texas on into North Texas, basically Alpine, roughly over toward Dallas up to Lubbock. The upper level trough that's swinging in and that's going to be pushing the cold front through. And as it comes in, it's likely to help kickstart some of these showers and thunderstorms on Thursday. And I know we have that 70% chance. That does not mean it's going to be raining all day. I think there'll be a few moments throughout the day where you are likely to see rain. And in some cases, you could see up to two inches, some localized areas where we have some of the heaviest downpours and where we see multiple downpours. That's where we could have up to two inches, but I do think it's going to be more common to see closer to an inch, give or take in many area wide rain gauges. No, notice the future cast even showing most of it pushed south of here by Thursday night and even on into Friday morning. OK, let's talk temperatures and how that's going to change behind the cold front 96 today. That's 10 degrees above average. We're actually going to be dropping below average eventually behind this cold front. But before we do, I have to point out Today, the 118th consecutive day, our high temperature has been at least 90 degrees. That is a record by a long shot here in San Antonio. The cool front is off to the north right now. See the temperatures in the 50s, Dakotas into Nebraska, and even a bit cooler, Montana and Wyoming. This is the developing cold front, the pool of cool air developing that's going to be pushing southward. I do think we'll get a taste of fall weather, but we're not talking big time sweater weather. You're not going to be you know, turning on the fireplace or anything with this one, but you will notice the changes and we'll drop a low average tomorrow. Another warm day, 75 in the morning at sunrise, 94 in the afternoon, that 20% chance of a shower by and large low to mid 90s tomorrow. Converse 94, Floresville, Nixon 96. Lost Maples, Utopia and Sabinal at 93. Look at the trend mid 80s on Thursday, even Friday behind the initial cold front. 85 degrees for the high temperature this weekend. We see those temperatures fall off. Still some uncertainty as to exactly what the highs will be, but we're thinking most likely mid to upper 70s for highs both Saturday and Sunday, which would mean even lower morning temperatures potentially dipping into the upper 50s by Sunday morning at sunrise. Also Monday morning at sunrise. Should that verify? It'd be the coolest mornings and the coolest temperatures since May 1st. Also, I do want to point out the lower humidity that less humid air should get here. I'm thinking around or just after kickoff time for high school football and big game Ooh, coverage this yeah. Friday. All right. And then that lower humidity through the weekend. Looking forward to it. Thank you, Adam. Regardless of what's happening outside, the Spurs are in that nice, uh, cozy place. Their new digs practicing. How's that going? It looks so nice, and you can tell they are loving it. I imagine that's going to be a great recruiting tool, hopefully maybe one day for some big-name free agents. But, yes, today was the first day of training camp, and we'll check in with Trey Jones to see what he thinks the Spurs' strengths are coming in to the new season. Plus, October baseball is off to a smoking hot start, and the Rangers get a big win to open their series. <laughs> uh, yeah, dinner is on Dev, you know, for a couple weeks for sure. <laughs> I'm happy for him. He, he earned it all. Obviously, we came in together, um, and so we've been, we've been at it for, you know, going into our fourth year, and, you know, I couldn't be more happy for him. The Spurs re-signed point guard Trey Jones in free agency and now Devin Vassell to a massive five-year deal. It's time for Big Board Sports. Texas rebounds from its weekend collapse that cost the Rangers the AL West title and a first round bye with a 4-0 win against the Rays to open their AL wildcard series. Texas is now a win away from an AL division series matchup against the Orioles. Josh Young and Corey Seager drove in runs and the Rangers benefited from four Tampa Bay errors. Meanwhile, 
Texas starter Jordan Montgomery pitched exceptional, scattering six hits over seven innings. Even better, Montgomery's diving catch in the second inning to preserve the eventual shutout. He scare you by deciding he was going to make a gold glove play? Yeah, it wasn't a soft landing, was it? Uh, yeah, he's a big fella. And uh, a nice play, great catch by him. We're in a tight uh, situation there, so big play at that point in the game. And just shows you how competitive he is to go out there and die for that ball. Take another look. Runners at the corners. Jose Siri pops one up and in comes six foot six Montgomery for the grab. Just a gem of a play. Sets the tone for what will be the rest of the series. Now the Rangers look to sweep the series tomorrow at 208 here on the KSAT Airwaves in the other wildcard series. Uh, matchup in the AL Minnesota was propelled by its stud rookie Royce Lewis in a three to one win, putting an end to the Twins dreadful 18 game postseason losing streak that dates back to 2004. The Astros await the winner of that matchup. Now in the NL wildcard round, the Phillies beat Miami four to one. The winner there plays Atlanta and the Diamondbacks capture the win six to three. The Dodgers await the winner there. Okay, so Devin Vassell will be treating, treating meals after signing a well-deserved five-year $146 million deal. The Spurs kicked off training camp today in their stunning new practice facility. And Victor Wembanyama continues giving everyone newfound excitement and optimism. It's a great time to be a Spur. Now this team is young and will inevitably face growing pains with a developing Wemby in the mix. But the ceiling is still much higher than last year's 22 and 60 season. You know, we're getting older, um, getting more experience from from all the from all the things last year. Um, but I think this year something we'll see is, you know, a lot of different guys bringing up the ball. Uh, that's kind of how the game in basketball is kind of moving towards is, you know, one through four, even one through five. Sometimes um, guys can bring up bring up the basketball at, at any point. And so uh, I think we'll see that a lot this year. A lot of guys can handle, a lot of guys can shoot it. Um, we have a, a lot of guys, like I said, think the game, game at a high level. And so we'll be able to use that to our advantage. Hey, how about these walkouts for camp? Doug McDermott and then Jeremy Sohan uh, gets the good vibes going. We'll be right back. A bye as early as week five turned out to be perfectly timed for the UTSA football team who came out of its non-conference schedule with a less than ideal one in three record. But by no means is it too late to turn things around. The Roadrunners make their AAC debut this weekend in a first ever meeting with Temple and the team is optimistic given its proven track record in conference play. UTSA is dealing with injuries to key players, but coach Jeff Trailer says it's not a time to lack in intensity. Inconsistent football teams don't get taken care of during practice. They got to practice harder. We're airing on the edge of physicality right now, not, not on the uh, the side of um, being too careful. It's too early in the year. I mean, our last three years we've had bye weeks, you know, week nine, so different kind of mindset. But we're not a real good football team right now, and um, we've got to get better. So we got to practice and, and get physical. And you, you don't stop the run by not being physical, and you don't run the football without being physical. How cool is this? The sons of two former NFL quarterbacks, Kirk Warner and Kurt Warner and Josh McCown will be on the field this weekend in Philadelphia. Owen McCown with UTSA and Temple starter is EJ Warner. Wow. It's awesome. Yeah. Those are big <laughs> nice names. Legacy, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Thank you, Mary. Thank, Thank you. you. We'll be right back after this. Before we go, a quick programming note. Good morning, San Antonio. We'll soon have a new start time. Yeah, GMSA is going to air from 5 to 7 a.m. beginning Monday, October 9th. You're going to be able to catch ABC's America this morning from 4.30 a.m. to 5. Again, it all starts on Monday, October 9th, next Monday. Changes are coming. Still warm the next few days. We'll actually get down into the 80s for highs by Thursday, Friday, then even cooler this weekend. It's going to be glorious. Thank you so much. Thank you for joining us. Have a great night. See you tomorrow.